Welcome back to the Chase Down. I am Chase Sanders. Today we're going to talk about uh, Thunder have hired their new head coach, Chris Paul. Trade talks are starting to heat up. And, uh, okay, get this. Russell Westbrook once out of Houston. Okay, now the Thunder have finally hired their new head coach and they have done the most Thunder thing that any Thunder team has ever thundered and just hired a guy we already had. They passed up on Will Weaver, which was a guy I talked about, um, and they just hired uh, Mark Dagnall, who was an assistant coach for the Thunder this year, which a lot of people thought might happen. Mark Dagnall or Brian Keefe um, might just end up getting promoted from being assistant coach to head coach for the Thunder. Uh, Mark Dagnall is a young head coach. He's uh, 35. Um, he's been and he's been with the Thunder team since he was 29. He was uh, coached the Oklahoma City Blue from 2014 to 2019, and then they called him up to be an assistant coach just this last season. Um, and I think this is a good move for the Thunder right now because they didn't go out and get some fancy coach, you know, with all the coaches who are kind of up for all these hiring jobs. A lot of coaches were fired. And, you know, big names out there on the market, guys like Ty Lu and Sam Cassell and uh, Doc Rivers and Billy Donovan um, were out there. Thunder just played it safe, got a player development coach, a guy who you don't have to pay a lot of money, and you know he can develop players, and he's, we don't really know if he's a good X's and O's guy, really. And we don't even know if he's going to be there very long for the Thunder. He might be there until the Thunder get, like, the team that they have, and they have uh, all these guys who have been developed, and they're good, and they're ready to go, and it's time to make a run for the playoffs, and then time to make a run for a championship, which could be far in the future, or it might not take that long, like the last Thunder rebuild that happened. So Sam Presti kind of plays it safe, and just goes with the guy he already has. Uh, Mark Dignall was... Um, he was a coach, a student, like a student coach over at UConn under Jim Calhoun, uh, who we know is a good coach from 2003 to 2007. Then he went to assistant coach over at Holy Cross and then uh, was at Florida 2010 to 2012 with Billy Donovan. And then he came over to the Oklahoma City Blue and he's been there uh, ever since. And so they, uh, in the interview, they talked about Mark Dignall kind of likes to run a pace and space offense which is kind of uh, run the floor uh, on a fast break and then when you're over on the half court lots of lots of moving without the ball screens and everything uh, you know leave have a guys out on the perimeter you know um, spacing guys out shoot some shoot some threes attack the basket things like that just your modern NBA offense pretty much um, which we kind of saw the Thunder adapt to a little bit more than they had in the past just this last season Kind of, but not really. Uh, hopefully the Thunder can get some more shooters, um, maybe in free agency or through the draft. And hopefully the Thunder will probably run even more plays with all these young guys, no big ego guy to kind of take, to kind of run the offense through. Um, just a lot of young guys, and the Thunder can run even more plays than they just did this last season. And then, because we know before that, the Thunder's offense was just iso ball, some iso ball and then more iso ball so it looks to be a good move going forward for guys like Shea Gildas Alexander, Lou Dort and Darius Baisley um you know you know guys he's familiar with and then uh you know down in the G League where he's been with guys like Hamadou Diallo and Terrence Ferguson and Deontay Burton and all those guys uh, you know we've seen a lot of guys go uh play in the G League and come up and play for the Thunder, help the Thunder out a couple of times. Guys like Dakari Johnson, uh, you know, uh, Samaj Christian, guys like that. So nobody special except for, I mean, Lou Dora was there in the G League while Mark Degnault was up here with the Thunder. Um, so I think this is a, a safe play for the Thunder. They don't have to go, go out and get some flashy guy, player development coach, who you never know, he could end up being a really good coach. Um, we don't really know his kind of X's and O's really right now. Okay, now also Chris Paul trades have started to heat up. Uh, big talks, um, what we've hear, what we see a lot on Twitter from uh, 
from Woj and all those guys that the Thunder have been talking to. Uh, the Suns and you know Sam Presti wants to. Uh, Sam Presti likes to make his players happy and, you know, pick a place where Chris Paul would probably like to go. And everybody thinks that uh, the Suns would be be good with a good point guard. We've seen Ricky Rubio kind of help Devin Booker out. And they could even upgrade that up one more time by bringing in Chris Paul. And obviously, if Chris Paul comes in, then Ricky Rubio is probably out. Um, so the Suns are looking to to upgrade and make a run for the playoffs. You saw them almost make the playoffs just as last season. They went, tried to go on the, they went on the 8-0 run in the bubble, and but they needed um, some other teams to lose and just couldn't, couldn't quite make it into the playoffs. And so now the Suns are looking to upgrade their roster with what could maybe be a make or break year for their re- relationship with Devin Booker because if the Suns have another bad season or – you know, a bad season where they maybe don't make the playoffs or maybe are only the eighth seed or, you know, just, just underperforming. We could maybe see Devin Booker once out after that. Um, I don't really think he wants out right now. I think probably looking to go run it one more season. Just got DeAndre Ayton. Uh, DeAndre Ayton can, can stay out of trouble, stay on the floor, stay healthy, you know, play a lot of games for the Suns. I think they can look really awesome. Um, but also another – some other pieces in this trade besides Ricky Rubio. Ricky Rubio is not the big piece in this. Uh, we're, we're talking about the t- the tenth overall draft pick, and then Kelly Oubre. A lot of people are saying Kelly Oubre is the odd man out in this one because uh, when the Suns were kind of playing at their best there in the bubble, uh, Kelly Oubre was not there. They had the lineup with uh, M- Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson playing on the wing, so looking to maybe run with those guys and maybe that's their lineup that they like to run with and Kelly Oubre could be out of there a good young player not sure how much better he will get but we know he is a good player um and you know another question is is Chris Chris Paul worth trading uh trying to get Chris Paul worth trading the 10th pick away um not really necessarily I'm not sure how much the Suns would would want um, the tenth pick. You know, if you get Chris Paul, then you have Devin Booker, Michael Bridges, Kevin Johnson, DeAndre Ayton, your starting lineup, and then maybe Dario Saric coming off the bench, and then uh, that tenth pick is the is the other guy coming off another guy coming off the bench, and then you add a couple more guys, guys like Aaron Baines and whatnot. Uh, so that's a possible. Uh, people are saying that the Suns don't want to give up the tenth pick. So that could make it hard for the Thunder. The Thunder could maybe spice up the deal of a sign and trade for with Gallinari, and then you bring Gallinari over there, beef up that roster even more. But again, they have Dario Saric, so Dario Saric and Gallinari kind of being out there together might not really work. But you could always could throw in some other players into that trade. But once again, we never know what trades are coming for the Thunder when you have the ninja that is Sam Presti. You don't know what he's going to do. The ninja himself, when we're talking about trades, Sam Presti, you can't really predict. You can't guess. It's never what people are thinking, uh, especially when we're talking about trades, what Sam Presti is going to do. Uh, some other possible places, um, you know, the Lakers always want, uh, are always talking about getting a point guard, but the Lakers have given up all their assets to the Pelicans, so not really like a likely trade destination for uh, the Thunder and Chris Paul. Um, another another place that w- would like to have a point guard, uh, Kawhi Leonard, has requested the Clippers go get him a point guard. But as we know, the the Clippers, the Clippers already gave everything to us, and they don't have anything else left to give us for Chris Paul. So <laughs> that's not happening. The Knicks always get thrown in there. Um, for some reason, uh, that's a weird destination, but hey, the Knicks are stupid, so whatever. And then another part is now they're saying with all this news has come out that uh, teams that go over the salary cap might not get hit with as big of a luxury tax uh, this year um, with you know uh, not as much revenue possibly coming in this year for the NBA with a uh, was probably going to be limited fans or if any fans and you know less less revenue for the for the NBA teams 
Uh, but that's kind of all we know about Chris Paul. And now let's get to the big story of the day. Houston has a problem. <laughs> I know I'm I'm just the funniest and I'm original and I've you've never heard that joke before. Russell Westbrook wants out of Houston. Russell Westbrook wants out of H Town. Russell Westbrook wants away from James Harden. Maybe, sort of, kind of. So it's come out that Russell Westbrook doesn't really like the culture. Uh, he wants to kind of be the main guy. He wants to probably be the main ball handler. Uh, playing alongside James Harden, who has one of the highest usage rates uh, that we've ever seen in the game of basketball, uh, along with Russell Westbrook, who is used to having a really high usage rate you know, in his MVP year. And then um, he was the main ball handler when uh, Paul George and Carmelo came over. And then... After that, he kind of let Paul George have the reins, and then he goes over to Houston and James Harden. That's already James Harden's team, and he kind of has to play a lot of off ball, and that's not really West, Russell Westbrook's style, so he kind of just wants to get back to what he knows and how he likes to play basketball, where he's the main guy, he's the main ball handler. Uh, a culture that fits him uh, a lot more. Um so Houston is kind of in, just imploding because we, I saw a couple of reports that maybe say um, that PJ Tucker wasn't really happy with his role necessarily. Uh, Austin Rivers wasn't very happy with his role. Um, so yeah, just the Houston culture is not really there. I don't think it really has much to do with the front office, more kind of on the court and in the locker room. Um, because I think James Harden and Russell Westbrook were both on board with the coach hiring of uh, 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 Steve Silas or whoever, whatever, whoever that is. So really, it's kind of a more of a basketball standpoint. I think with Russell Westbrook, you know, he's used to being the main guy, the guy running the show, the guy who, you know, when Russell Westbrook's in the building, this is Russell Westbrook's building. Um, but with James Harden around and being in the Houston Rockets, um, or James Harden's the man. James Harden runs the show and. Um, is James Harden's building and you know you know things of that nature he's not really wasn't I guess he wasn't really ready for that so again some possible trades for Russell Westbrook once again we're talking Clippers who uh, probably have a better chance of getting Russell Westbrook than they do Chris Paul and once again we have the Knicks um, I've seen NBA Twitter kind of toss around uh, Orlando Magic could be a good fit for for him where he can come in and he can be the main guy but you also have guys like uh, Vucevic and Aaron Gordon there already so they wouldn't be a bad team and you know sitting in the east lower into the east they can make the playoffs still not sure how far they would go probably not much farther than what the Houston Rockets did uh, this year uh, you know there's the Miami Heat who were kind of in talks of trying to get Russell Westbrook I guess but that kind of fell through with the Thunder um, once again, Lakers are always looking for a point guard, uh, looking to run it back and try and win a championship. I've seen a couple of people talk maybe uh, he could go to the Denver Nuggets, uh, you know, trade involving like Gary Harris and Paul Millsap, you know, things of that nature. Um, seen a couple of people talk maybe Denver could be a spot to kind of get them over the hump, but then, but you still have. Guys like Nikola Jokic, who handled the ball a lot, and Jamal Murray, who handled the ball a lot, and kind of take over in the playoffs. So I'm not sure how much of a fit that really is. Now, we don't really know if James Harden once had. They did say at the same time that uh, Russell Westbrook and James Harden were both kind of uh, frustrated with what was going on with the Houston Rockets. Um, I guess they weren't really well informed, but I don't really think it has too much to do with the front Rockets but now they're saying that James Harden wants to stay with the Rockets and he's locked in for next season but after the reports that came out not really sure we know that Philadelphia is going hard after James Harden but I don't see that one happen I don't really see the the Rockets trading away James Harden without getting up a big you know massive haul in like what the Thunder got um so all we know is the Rockets are imploding um Explo just like imploding, killing themselves from the inside. P.J. Tucker wasn't happy. Austin Rivers wasn't happy. Now Russell Westbrook most likely wants out. They could maybe keep him in there, but you know, this close to the to the season starting, 
it's most likely there's going to end up being a trade and Russell Westbrook wants to be the man, but we know he wants to be a contender. So not, not real sure what's going to go on with that. Is James Harden going to still be with the Rockets? We don't know. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Where do you think Russell Westbrook's going? Do you think James Harden's going to stay? Who do you think, what players do you think the Thunder should trade besides Chris Paul? So we're talking Dennis Schroeder, Stephen Adams, guys like that. Make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button. Uh, comment down below what you guys want me to talk about um, and what you guys think. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.